CataractCoach.com resident pre-chopper technique. So the resident uses a pre-chopper to perform nucleofractus or breaking up the nucleus into smaller pieces. Good draping, eye and primary, good positioning, starting off with a paracentesis here. So the resident's question is, is it okay for this young doctor to do primarily the pre-chopper technique? And so we're going to watch that technique here. So anesthetics being placed inside the anterior chamber. And now it looks like some viscoelastic going inside the eye. It's a nice looking fill there. Beautiful dilation. You can even see zonular attachment there. Here's the main incision. Let's watch carefully. Looks pretty reasonable. Good tunnel length. And let's take a peek there. I'll take it. A little bit of a chevron. You see that? Look at the incision. The chevrons, because the angle change was too abrupt, the start off in one plane, and then an immediate and abrupt change in the angle, that gives that chevron tip. Look there. Look at that, look at that uh, sub-incisional area there. You see that triangle. That is the chevron sign. When you look at this patient tomorrow on post-op day one, you will be disappointed to see that chevron sign. So that already you got to fix. You can't have that. You can't go through your whole life making these chevron incisions that don't seal as well and are imbalanced. Now there's a rexus. looks pretty reasonable. Uh, maybe a little on the small side. And let's see some hydrodissection using a specialized chain cannula, it looks like. So good hydrodissection. Certainly with a pre-chop technique, you want good hydrodissection. You want that nucleus to rotate. Remember what I say, if it does not spin, you will not win. So make sure it spins. There you go. Now it's spinning. More viscoelastic is needed for the pre-chopper because you now need to have the eye refilled. And here comes the pre-chopper going inside the eye. So you can see it has these two paddles. It's relatively sharp. It's sharp enough to, to penetrate into the nucleus. And the lens of this nucleus, you don't have to necessarily hold the lens in place. You place the, the pre-chopper into the nucleus and spread it apart, and it'll split that nucleus. And that's just a really nice technique if you are having trouble with performing fake with chop, or maybe you don't like the divide and conquer. And now using the same instrument to rotate the nucleus, and you can split it again and try to get the eye back in primary, people. Put, the, put your hand down. That's better. Much better being back in primary. And now splitting again. So now you've got four nice looking quadrants. I think they're fully separated. If you want to, you can put a little more viscoelastic in there to separate the, the, um, the lines there. And now going in with the fake probe, you obviously at this point need a high vacuum. So 400 or more millimeters of mercury using a blunt chip ch tip chopper there. Yeah, I like this idea too, making sure the quadrants are fully separated. You want to tip up that piece and grab it right there to the apex and then bring it centrally and you should be able to aspirate it all pretty well, and it'll come right out. Now, the small rex is gonna make that a little more challenging. That's why that one quadrant didn't wanna come out. So you can try again on the next one, try to bring it up, there it is. Once it clears that rex's edge, it's easy. And of course, after the first quadrant's out, there's more room for the other three quadrants in the bag. So use any technique you like of nucleofractus, whether that's divide and conquer, stop and chop, any variation of quick chop, flip and chop, vertical, horizontal chop, pre-chop, whatever you like. Hey, femtosecond laser, if you want to use that to split up the nucleus into pieces, anything you desire is going to be reasonable. My advice to you, though, is learn all the techniques. I'd rather have more tools in my toolbox. I want to learn, if you're playing pickup basketball, you want to have more than just your layup. You want to have your layup. You want to have your jump shot. You want to have whatever else shots. The slam dunk. You need to have many different techniques that you know so you can tailor it to the patient. If you only know the one technique, well, gosh, you got to do every case with that one technique. So pre-chop is good. If that's your home run or go-to, your fastball, reasonable enough. Do it for every case. But obviously, there are going to be cases where it's more challenging. For pre-chop, the more challenging ones are where you have greater nuclear density. And that's because you'll have a harder time just poking the paddles of the pre-chopper into the nucleus. You may have to have a second instrument, like a nucleus sustainer, which is essentially just like a hook or a chopper, to hook or hold the equator of the lens nucleus so that you can really have a little more uh, holding force. So as you place that paddle of the pre-chopper into the nucleus, it's going to be a little bit more secure. Otherwise, with a dense nucleus, if you don't have that second instrument to hold the nucleus, you're not going to be able to fully place that pre-chopper deep enough into the dense nucleus. Here comes the lens going in the capsule bag. That looks pretty good. Delivering it nice and easy. Single piece acrylic lens using the IA probe to put it in the capsule bag. That looks great. This is a lens that has a 6 millimeter overall optic size. 
Um, but you can see there's like a dead zone around the edge of that, so it's not really a functional or focusing six millimeter. And then so now taking out our viscoelastic here, let's see the rex size. No, rex size is pretty reasonable, maybe a little less than five millimeters. So that that lens has a five millimeter focusing optic, or maybe 5.1, 5.2. So this is just slightly under five millimeters. It looks great. So pre-chopping definitely works well. And you should definitely try it in your techniques as well. Put it into your armamentarium. And maybe some of you will continue to use it thereafter. For me, I still like the FACO chop. But hey, I'm always willing to learn new techniques. Thanks for watching.